So how do we evaluate a patient who has inflammatory bowel disease and now they're pregnant? Well, certainly this can be challenging. It, they're pregnant. And so you're limited on some of the things and the different modalities that you have to be able to evaluate your patient. And some of these different modalities have certainly not even been tested uh, during pregnancy uh, consistently to see how good is the test to evaluate for disease activity, for example. We certainly want to avoid any potential risk to the fetus. And lots of these modalities, modalities and specifically our lab testing, such as our inflammatory markers, they naturally increase during the time of pregnancy. And, but what I want to emphasize and we'll talk about is that medical treatment should not be withheld if a patient during the time of pregnancy has increased bowel symptoms. So let's talk about some of these modalities. We'll first start talking about our inflammatory markers, ESR and CRP. As you all know, ESR and CRP is quite nonspecific. And oftentimes, but we do know that oftentimes it increases with increased bowel disease activity, for example. But again, the limitation or the potential risk or limitation, as the column there says, it is affected by pregnancy, so it may not be accurate. Naturally, you will have an elevation of both ESR and CRP. Usually, ESR is more elevated than CRP during pregnancy, but still, you'll have a rise in these inflammatory markers, so it becomes difficult to know if your patient is truly flaring or if this is their, their normal pregnancy labs that we're receiving. And I want you to remember that naturally, general population, pregnant, male, female, doesn't matter, 20% of patients do not mount an inflammatory response with ESR and CRP. So remember that when you're even evaluating a pregnant patient now who you want to consider getting the ESR, CRP lab levels. If to begin with, they're not mounting a response, these are certainly not labs you want to follow throughout pregnancy either. What about fecal calprotectin? Well, certainly this can reflect inflammation of the colon, but we, do, we also know that the limitation is that it's not a great test as far as a biomarker to evaluate active disease, particularly of the small bowel. And again, there's insufficient data for the use of fecal calprotectin during pregnancy. And I'll even add to that that there's still limited data for good cutoff standardized levels even without pregnancy. So we're still learning a lot more about fecal calprotectin, but particularly during the use of pregnancy, we're even limited with that. What about flexible sigmoidoscopy? Can we use this as a modality to evaluate our patients who are flaring potentially during pregnancy? Well, the benefit here is it gives us direct visualization. We could obtain biopsies, rule out infection, for example, if we need to. And we don't necessarily have to perform uh, give them sedation, which makes it uh, beneficial for us as well. The limitation is that you can only evaluate the distal part of the colon, so you're limited to the right side as well as evaluation of the small bowel. What about colonoscopy? Well, certainly this is a gold standard to evaluate disease activity, particularly colonic or, or terminal ileal disease as well. The limitation here for evaluation and using this during pregnancy is sedation, also technically difficult with, gravi with a gravid uterus. And, but if used, it, it is best perf uh, to perform a colonoscopy during the second trimester. What about a CT interrography? Can we use a CT interrography to evaluate our patients, right? It's good, we can evaluate the small bowel, the large bowel, but there's that risk of radiation to the fetus. What about MR interrography? Again, we have an opportunity to evaluate both the small and large intestines, but the IV contrast is contraindicated during pregnancy because gadolinium is a category X. So when we look at these different modalities and what we can and cannot utilize to, effect, to evaluate for disease flare, we need to keep these in mind and these limitations in mind, even though there may be some benefit in the use of them.